this one is 3.23 h here we have a simply supported beam with udl and point load and we need to draw the shear force bending moment diagram using singularity functions so right here we will have one reaction r1 and here we will have r2 and this udl can be replaced by a point load right at the center and the value of this force is going to be 1.5 into 1.5 and the distance from this side is 1.5 divided by 2 which is 0 0.75 in terms of your reaction forces, we can write down two equations, your R1 plus R2 for force balance will be 1.5 which is this force right here plus 1.5 into 1.5 that's coming because of this UDL. Now for moment balance, I can take moment about this point right here, so 1.5 into 1.5 this is moment because of this force in the clockwise direction plus the moment because of this force so 1.5 into 1.5 and the distance from here up to here is going to be 1.5 plus 2.25 which is 3.75 plus 0 0.75 so 4.5 meters now this moment will be balanced by your r2 moment which is at a distance of 4.5 from this we can solve the value of r1 and r2 which is 0 0.45 kilonewtons R1 and 3.3 kilonewtons R2. Now here in this beam we have point loads and UDL. So for point load we use X minus A minus 1. For UDL we use X minus A 0. In terms of integration this will give you 0. One more integration will give us power 1. Your UDL integration will give you power 1 and then in the second integration it's going to give you square divided by 2. So let's write down the intensity function qx for this. We'll start from this side. So r1 or let's take the value. r1 is 0 0.45. So 0 0.45 x minus 0 minus 1 because of point force. Then we have this minus 1.5. This is at a location of 1.5 again because of point force. Then we have r2 which is plus 3.3 this is at location of 3.75 because of point force minus 1 and then we have a UDL so this UDL will keep on extending after the beam because there is nothing beyond that for us to consider so we can write this as minus 1.5 since it is starting at 3.75 power is going to be 0 in this case so in the next step we can integrate your Q to get your shear force with a negative sign so we get minus 0 0.45 x minus 0 minus 1 becomes 0 plus 1.5 x minus 1.5 minus 1 again becomes 0 minus 3.3 .3, x minus 3.75 minus 1 again becomes 0 plus 1.5 x minus 3.75 this power becomes 1 here if you do one more integration with the negative sign, you get depending moment. So you get 0 0.45 x minus 0 to the power 1 minus 1 1.5 x minus 1 1.5 to the power 1 again plus 3.3 .3, x minus 3.75 to the power 1 minus 1 1.5 x minus 3.75. One power will give you square divided by. Now this beam can be divided into segments, segment 1 here, segment 2 here and segment 3 right here. So let's see, this is your segment 1, segment 2, segment 3. Your segment 1 is when your x is less than or equal to 1.5. This one is when your x is greater than 1.5 but this is less than 3.75 and this is when your x is greater than 3.75. Now in terms of these functions, if I have in segment number 1, only this x minus 0 is going to be positive. So only these two functions will come in your segment number 1 right here. For segment 2, x minus 0 as well as x minus 1.5 will be coming in your expressions. And for segment 3, all of these functions will come in your calculations. So let's start writing your functions. So in segment 1, we will use 
only the first function so minus 0 0.45 x minus 0 to the power 0 will give you 1 so that's the value of your shear force mb1 we'll evaluate this function so 0 0.45 x minus 0 to the power 1 is going to be x now when we go to segment number 2 we are going to get v2 which is a combination of this first function and the second function since we have already calculated the first function we can just take the value 0 0.45 to that we can add the second term so this is going to be 1.5 coming from here similarly your mb2 is going to be 0.45x coming from the first term and minus 1.5 times x minus 1.5 coming from the second term so if i simplify this your mb2 comes out as minus 1.05x plus 2.25 and your V2 value is 1.05. Now in your segment 3, we will have V3 will be all four functions. So now we are going to add these two to your V2 value. So 1.05 and then from here we will get minus 3.3 and this one here plus 1.5 x minus 3.75. If I simplify this, I get 1.5 x minus 5.25. Similarly, for MB3, you can take the value from MB2, which is minus 1.05 x plus 2.25. And we can add these last two terms here. So the first one is 3.3 times x minus 3.75. And the last one here is minus 1.5 divided by 2 x minus 3.75 whole square. If I simplify this mb3, I get minus 1.5 x minus 5.25 whole square divided by 2. So now we have got all the values. So we can draw an axis system and plot this. So here is an axis system with all the conventions followed. So in segment 1, we are going to plot this value. Let's maintain a constant value here. In segment 2, we'll have this constant value, so something like this right here. Segment 3, we have to plot this. Now for this, we can evaluate this at 2, x equals to 3.75, and x equals to 5.25. At 5.25, you can clearly see this value is going to be 0. At x equals to 3.75, this value is minus 2.25. <coughs> so I can combine all of these from here to here I'll have a straight line that goes like this this is 0 0.45 this is 1.05 so we can shade this area and this is how the shear force for this beam is now for the bending movement we have to plot this one in segment one so it's going to be a positive line going upwards we can evaluate this at 0 and x equals to 1.5 so at 0, this value is 0, and somewhere here, we draw this, this value right here is 0 0.675. In segment 2, we have this line, which is going to have a negative slope, so it's going to go downwards. So you can plot a line in this manner. And there are two values required for this, so one will be at x equals to 1.5, another one at 3.75. We are going to match the same value here, and at x 3.75, we'll get minus 1.69 from this now in the last segment we have to plot this function and this you can clearly see so this is a parabola opening downwards so we can draw this in, in this manner right here so we can create the shaded region here and this is how the shear force and bending movement diagram looks for this beam